Hey, I'm Leon. I'm the co-founder and animation director at Bumpy Box. I founded the company about 10 years ago, straight out of university. And Gareth asked me to do a quick talk just on my time at uni and a couple of things I've done since. So I'll just talk about a couple of projects we did in the second and third year, as well as the masters. Started my company, a couple of other things, such as uh, doing animation motion capture for Sega. And then when I came back to my company, to pitch projects and eventually be sold our most successful project yet, My Pet Source. So there's our company logo and you'll recognize this guy if you've ever seen My Pet Source. This guy you won't recognize because we ditched him as soon as uh, Monsters Inc. came out, which was roughly about the same time. So we went to the atrium and studied computer animation with these two guys who are now my business partners. So we started Bumby Box because there were a lot of companies coming to us kind of asking us for work. And we also were keen to develop our own projects and kind of do our own thing. So we started working together in the second year when uh, Gareth brought in a BBC brief, which is a radio show that they wanted animated. And we kind of realized that we work quite well together and kind of cover all the areas of animation and we're quite good at managing other people as well. So that was very good for when we went into our third year where we worked on Toke's feature and we also did some work on the T-Rex in the atrium, which I'm most sure you've all seen a number of times. And then in the third year, there was something called the Entrepreneur Award, which we won with an idea we had. And part of the prize was business mentorship and help to kind of set up a company. So that was perfect for us. Uh, as well as that, we decided to do a master's and kind of develop a pilot for a TV show. So then we could make the pilot on the master's and try and just roll straight into the company afterwards with another series. I'll just show you a little clip from that. High up in the sky, nestled between the stars, live a group of tiny friends who love to play, explore, and discover new things. There they are now. Hello red, hello green, hello pink. Where are you going today? So this was kind of an idea we came up with on the BA while we were pitching for the Entrepreneur Award. And it kind of helped us hone things down for a lot of our series work we're doing now, which is great. And also you'll notice it's CG on live action background, which is another thing that's kind of set us up for a lot of the projects we're doing in the company, such as My Pet Soros and another couple of things we're pitching now. So after doing the masters and pitching the series, we were actually successful in pitching the series to the BBC, but unfortunately we were paired with another company who went into liquidation and then kind of put the project on hold for a long time. So these are a bunch of adverts and TV shows and games we kind of did afterwards. I'll just show you a little clip of this one. Just because it's a really fun little project we did with a Bristol company, Sun and Moon. So we essentially just did the CG animation and they stuck the game together. It turned out very nicely, I think. this was just one of the projects that was kind of bread and butter work which brought money in while we were kind of developing our own shows. So as well as um, doing projects for our own company, I've also freelanced for a couple of other companies in Cardiff, which are Cloth Cat and Bait Studios are probably the biggest ones. Uh, Cloth Cat mainly being TV, I did some Grandpa My Pocket, some Shane the Chef, and then a couple of films with bait, such as Dream Horse and Morphic, which is a Welsh language film. As well as them, it's quite easy to do uh, remote work over um, in animation because of the nature of the industry. So I also did a couple of remote projects for Creative Assembly before I moved over and worked for them for about two years. And... And uh, I'll show you something from Nuco Brain, which is a London company, 
who we kind of made contact with and they really liked our stuff, so we did a couple of animations for them. This is a short film we did, working with them. So I did most of the animation on this. And they did the rest. So, as well as that, we went on to do a couple of adverts afterwards. It's probably being my favourite one because it was a live action uh, with CG Mix. As you'll see, it's probably our trademark at the moment in the industry. So, essentially what we did on this one was we tracked the live action footage and just stuck a moustache on there. So we were on set doing the VSVAC supervision for this one, which was very handy, because it meant I could stop him from kind of moving too much around. And that was kind of pasted on adverts and TV all around the place. So it was quite a fun one to work on. As you can see, we were on set kind of taking HDRIs and making sure the lighting's right and everything. So this was another one that um, the university came to us to. They saw we were doing quite well with the adverts and shows and things and asked us if we could do kind of a, our experience at university just in a short little clip to advertise the university. So as you've probably noticed, we um, kind of used a lot of these projects to develop on things we did at university and kind of just hone and practice those techniques until they became really good, basically. So after that project, um, Sega got in touch with me and they'd seen my animation reel and they asked me if I could come over and do some animation for Warhammer Total War cinematics. And I ended up doing a bunch of cinematic trailers, some in-game cinematics, and a bunch of uh, in-game animation, which was really fun. So that was kind of a mixture of motion capture and just pure animation. So I did a bunch of races, including um, uh, elves, high elves, wood elves, skaven, 
get a bunch of other characters, just like little bits and bobs all over the place. So it's a really, really fun one to work on. And if you ever get a chance to do motion capture, that's really fun as well. And in my holiday for Sega, I came back to do some pitching at my company, Bumpy Box. So I went to conferences, just took our ideas, which I'll show you in a second, and just basically pitched them to a lot of broadcasters, see if we could get anything to stick. So this was kind of like an updated version of uh, Garden Galaxies we originally did for the Masters. You can see we changed the design of him purely because he's too similar to things like Monsters Inc. and Minions after they came out. We also tried more simple things we could do, like uh, button characters. And we also pitched to a couple of different studios, like Amazon Studios at the time were doing like an open pitch where anyone could pitch. So we tried a couple of those. And we took all these along with this one to the Children's Media Conference, where we sold this idea. So this was originally My Pet Dinosaur, and it turned into My Pet Saurus, which is now on its sixth series with a couple of specials. I'll just show you the clip we used to sell it, because it's very simple. Just basically a friend of ours took some footage of a little girl with her dog, and we just stuck a dinosaur over the top, and took it to the conference. So you can see it's quite simple, it's not the best quality, but it kind of gets the idea across. So here's a quick little breakdown, just to show you kind of how we did it. Yeah, so it was quite a fun one to do. And fortunately, all the broadcasters we showed it to really loved it. So we ended up going with the BBC and we took series one, which we animated just in a bedroom. We kitted out with computers and we did that for iPlayer. And it was originally just going to stay on the online platform until I think it made six and a half million requests. So BBC asked if they could play on the channel which was great, which meant we could also distribute it to different countries and basically sell it after it was already made, which is great. So it was consistently top of the linear brands, which means it was on the channel for children's TV, which is probably why we were able to distribute it with Jetpack because um, distribution is quite a big thing in terms of you have to take it to a bunch of different broadcasters. So we used a company called Jetpack who just take a load of shows and just sell them all over the place. So now my Pensaurus is in Denmark, Netherlands, New Zealand, it's in South Korea. So there's lots of little South Korean kids learning to speak English and watching my Pensaurus. We've hopefully got really thick Welsh accents because of Chloe now. And we've just recently sold it to Germany as well. And we're also kind of picking up the social media aspect of it with the hopes to sell some merchandising because I think that's where a lot of the money's gonna come from. But we're not quite there yet on the teddy because I don't like these designs, but I'm sure we'll figure that out soon. Uh, currently, we're working on Series 5. BBC have given us specials as well, the Tippy Special and the Christmas Special, which we're on just before Christmas. I'll just show you a little clip of those. Chloe and Topsy are waiting for a big surprise. You'll never guess what it is, boy. I can't tell you. It does spoil the surprise. They're here, they're here. Now, remember, it's important that they both get on. Or she'll have to go back to the shelter and be adopted by another family. They'll be best friends in no time. <laughs> Ready? Oh, she's so cute. This is Topsy, your new best friend. Topsy, what's wrong? Well, at least they're not fighting over it. But they're not playing together either. Perhaps we should take them outside into the garden so they can get used to each other. Good idea. 
Up you get, Mr. Lazy Paws. No, we're not going back inside. Tell you what, why don't I bring Tippy to Topsy instead? She just wants to be friends. Take them off the leaves, that might help. <laughs> See, boy, she wants to be friends. The garden might need a bit of a tidy up if they're going to be running around. Well, it's hardly in a mess, ma'am. <laughs> with Tippy here, you'll have someone to play with while Chloe's at school. <laughs> Tops is brightened up. Let's try again with Tippy. Tippy? Tippy? Where is she? What if she doesn't like you here and she's run away? Oh, Chloe, she can't have got far. I'll look inside. And we'll keep looking at you, won't we, Chloe? Bye. So that's come a long way since uh, animating from our bedroom to having famous actresses in Catherine Ayers and the lady from Gavin and Stacey, whose name I've forgotten. So this is essentially where we are now. We're about midway through the last series of My Petsaurus. And I'm just going to show you a couple of little projects we've recently done, such as Vixen's Tale, which accompanies a, a musical. And this was kind of a, an experience in the Millennium Center. So we did the Vixen animation. I'll just skim through this now. But it was essentially this kind of um, immersive experience. And then once you've got AR on your phone, you'll be able to see the Vixen, you'll be able to see the other little creatures just walking around and kind of leading you through the experience. As you can see there. So that was a really fun one to do, especially because it was based in Cardiff. So a lot of people I know could kind of go and see that. And we're currently, we've just finished series five and we're working on series six now of My Petsaurus and continuing the distribution. As I said, we've just sold to Germany. We've also had some Netflix interest and we're trying to work out the merchandising kinks now. We're also um, working on development for game things and interactive. We've got an Epic Mega Grant, which is basically a grant from Epic Games to develop some things we're working on, which is kind of a mix between games and TV, which will hopefully be shown soon. We've just finished an advert for Barber Christmas, which is a 2D advert we did the compositing and CG elements of. And Later this year, we'll be working on a feature, which is done in London for 2D animation, but we'll be doing the CG elements and we'll be doing some compositing, which is sticking it all together. I'll just show you a quick trailer of that. When I was a boy, my parents sold everything we had so they could take us on what they reckoned would be the trip of a lifetime. Sailing to the furthest corners of the world. It'll be the biggest adventure of your life, they said. They weren't wrong, because 10,000 miles from home was where my adventure really began. boy and his dog on what we thought was a deserted island. But this was Kensky's island. This was Kensky's kingdom.
Cool, so that should be a fun one we'll be working on later in the year once we've um, finished with my Petsaurus in about July. And I'm just going to finish by saying a couple of things I loved about the course, such as it was kind of the setup for the company really where we kind of honed our skills in developing the live action CG mix and kind of met all the people who worked on it really. And also um, a great thing about the course is the high-end kit because we hire out um, something called uh, Ari Alexa when we do the Mypetsaurus, which is about 18 grand worth of kit. And it costs us a lot of money to do that. And I just found in the university, they've got their own Alexa on site, so you can borrow that out, which is great. There's also a motion capture kit, which is the exact same kit I was using when I was at Sega. So it's a great one to try out. And the main thing about the course is just the freedom to follow your own vision and experiment. Just try things out, have fun, and kind of just set yourself up for your future. So thanks for listening, guys, and I hope you have a great time on the course if you do it. Thank you.